Hello and welcome to Business Incorporated coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. On the program today, platinum producer loan me to cut social and discretionary spending to save cash. African Development Bank approves $160 million loan for Nairobi's International Airport second runway. Plus, we will be taking a look at the cryptocurrency called Bitcoin. Let's get started now with the markets. And um, here in Nigeria, the market continued its uh, bullish trend at intraday today, up 0.12%. But the market in South Africa was in the red. Egypt is closed today for a holiday, and um, Kenya was up 1.13% on Wednesday. And Saudi Arabia's stock market edged up at intraday, while Qatar bull softened as regional trade was thinned by the closure of the Abu Dhabi market and Kuwait for public holidays. Now, the Saudi index added 0.32% as retailer United Electronics gained 2.3% after saying it had launched a partnership with online retailer Noon.com to be its exclusive supplier of home and electronic appliances in Saudi Arabia. In Qatar, the index fell 0.87% as Qatar Islamic Bank slipped 1.2%, but Shepa Qatar Navigation, which has been rebounding from an eight-year low hit in mid-November, jumped a further 5.8%. Dubai financial market was up 0.02%. Now we're moving now to the Wall Street where the U.S. stock index futures pointed to a negative open as investors geared up for an all-important OPEC meeting. Now in the previous session, the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed at an all-time high as market watchers bet the U.S. economy's momentum would continue following positive GDP data. Another area that has boosted markets is recent news that the Senate took a step towards passing a bill aimed at reforming the U.S. tax code on Tuesday. Now, aside from tax, uh, investors will be paying attention uh, to data, jobless claims and uh, personal income data, of course, are set to come out at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, followed by Chicago PMI data at 9.45 a.m. Eastern Time. In Asia, most markets there closed lower today as oil prices firmed after falling in the last session. Meanwhile, technology stocks in the region declined after U.S. shares in the sector sold off on Wednesday. Investors in the region also digested the better-than-expected official manufacturing PMI data out of China. Japan's Nikkei 225 rose 0.57%. In South Korea, the benchmark KOSPI index fell 1.45%. The Australian ASS 200 lost 0.69%. Mainland China markets also came under pressure, with the Shanghai Composite edging down 0.61% and the Shenzhen Composite losing 0.9%. All right, we move back now to the European market where bosses were mixed in early trade after U.S. tech giants slipped overnight. Uh, let's um, look at all the European market drivers on this day. Let's talk to Daniel Coop for more. Good afternoon, Daniel. Thank you for joining us. Well, it seems uh, Daniel is not yet ready for me. And um, let's move on now to the commodities market. Oil markets were cautious today ahead of an OPEC meeting in Vienna with producers set to debate on extension of the supply cut agreement that came into effect in January with the goal of tightening supplies and uh, propping up prices. The organization of the petroleum exporting countries is meeting at its headquarters in the Austrian capital, along with ministers from other oil producing countries, most importantly, Russia. Now, OPEC held a ministerial committee yesterday and an open session this morning before going into a closed session at noon. Non-OPEC ministers are set to join at 3 p.m., followed by a joint press conference after the meeting. Well, we'll look at um, what the likelihood of um, this, the outcome of this OPEC will be after we must have um, talked to Daniel, who is ready now to talk to us. Good afternoon, Daniel. Thank you very much for joining us. 
Hi there, Chimmy. Hope you're doing just fine. Greetings from Frankfurt. Sure, I'm doing great. Now let's look at um, Siemens um, IPO of Frankfurt. Got it. So what's up? Why the choice for Frankfurt uh, for Siemens there? Yeah, very interesting, right? I mean, here in Germany, we say because we have the river Main, who is right uh, going through Frankfurt. So people uh, are sometimes calling Frankfurt also Manhattan and not, uh, you know, Manhattan. <laughs> so investors uh, here are actually very happy already calling it the biggest IPO that we are going to see here in Frankfurt in 2018. And yeah, I was listening uh, very closely also to what the CEOs of uh, Siemens were saying a little bit uh, earlier um, they're basically saying that now with Brexit uh, Frankfurt uh, already the financial capital here of Germany is getting more and more important also uh, around uh, Europe and uh, the company by the way who will be organizing the IPO of this Siemens uh, company is uh, Goldman Sachs and Goldman Sachs uh, you're probably remembering another uh, company uh, also right now with most of uh, uh, their employees here in Europe based in London. They are now also shifting their employees over here to Frankfurt. So yeah, for them, of course, it makes sense to have this IPO here taking place in Frankfurt. Right, so walk us through the key numbers and the facts behind the figures and Eurozone's latest economic data, Germany's unemployment numbers precisely. Jimmy, I cannot really hear you at the moment. I'm kind of trying to tell uh, what I was understanding. Uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, those global figures that we are seeing and uh, also here coming from Europe because we've got very interesting uh, data also regarding the uh, unemployment uh, today. The unemployment here in Germany is right now at a level as that we haven't seen uh, pretty much since the German uh, reunification. Uh, just 2.36 mil million people at the moment are unemployed in Germany that's uh, 20,000 less as we have seen it in the months before and 164,000 less than a year before. Um, also, uh, I mean, Bitcoin is uh, one of the topics that everybody is at the moment uh, talking about. Yesterday, the Bitcoin was already close to a level of $11,000. Uh, um, but you probably remember that I was always uh, telling you and also to our viewers, of course, uh, that many investors are warning because uh, there can be changes of 20, sometimes 30 uh, percent of the Bitcoin. And that's something that we are seeing today right now. The Bitcoin is uh, just at a level at about uh, 10,000 uh, points where we were yesterday at 11,000 points. Also, um, with Brexit, uh, there's also data that we are getting today uh, from the United Kingdom. It seems that retailers are not as optimistic as they were last year when it comes to the Christmas uh, shopping, the index uh, that is always uh, me measuring the behavior and uh, the interest of uh, you know buyers uh, was uh, dropping by uh, about uh, two uh, points now to 12 points. And uh, we are also seeing a little similar picture also right now here in uh, Germany. So uh, not everybody is at the moment as excited about Christmas and Christmas shopping as we have seen it in the last year, Jimmy. All right, um, uh, Daniel, I may just have to let you go at this point. Uh, we really don't have much time on our hands. So I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow, Daniel.